So how do we design user experiences for humans? Uh, how do we create those wow moments? That's what product design is all about. It's when someone first touches your app, when someone first touches your product, and they go, wow, that's awesome, or wow, I really need this. The key to great product design is not starting with the solution. It's starting with the problem that you want to solve. And what we do as product designers is we talk to people, we interview them, and we try to find what are the interesting problems to solve. Over the last year, we interviewed over 1,000 people in the crypto industry, literally interviewed 20-minute conversations with them, talking about what are, the, their, what are their problems, what are their pain points, what are the unique things that we could actually, as a product designers, that we could create that would be beneficial for the crypto community, with the thinking being that if we build products first for this community, which is tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of people in crypto, and build really gorgeous, useful user experiences for crypto people, we can then take those experiences to the rest of the world. Much like, say, how Facebook started at Harvard and then went to colleges and then went to high schools and then went to the world, we could build crypto user experiences for humans if we talk to humans and learn about their needs and their pain points. So we talked to thousands of people in crypto over the last couple of years, and we learned a lot. The first thing we learned is that people in the crypto movement feel like they're in a movement, that we actually feel like together we're really working hard to make the world a better place, that we actually are changing society, that crypto is made up of builders. There's so many people in this industry who are working so hard and creating so many interesting things. Collaborators, that it's a community that wants to come together. We go to these conferences not just to give speeches and presentations, but because we truly want to learn through this open source technology how to build better products together as a community together. But we also learn by talking to people that it's quite noisy out there. There's a ton of shilling. Sometimes you feel like there's just a whole lot of nonsense out there in this space. And there's a lot of skepticism from the rest of the world as to whether any of this blockchain or crypto stuff is ever going to amount to anything. If you think about with all the shilling and all the noise and all the hype of the last few years, a lot of folks are saying, is there ever going to be a payoff? There's also fear, fear from incumbents of, is all this decentralized, decentralized technology going to disrupt our businesses? There's fears from governments, from institutions, as to what all this means. And sometimes it really can feel like we're all just shouting at each other. I mean, I think most of us are on crypto Twitter. And crypto Twitter sometimes can just feel like a lot of people shouting at each other rather than working together. So another thing we learn is that as humans, in this environment, we all crave more and more authenticity, more human interaction, real connections, and better ways to share collaborate, and to show appreciation to each other for all the hard work and all the projects that are developing. Because one thing that I've learned and our team has learned over the last six months especially, by going to conferences like this all around the world, is that the spirit of the community, the crypto community, today, right now, is stronger than ever. And the reason it's stronger than ever is because of the makers, because of the developers, because of the builders. This picture here was at ETH uh, DevCon uh, a couple weeks ago. And I can tell you, it was the strongest sense of we are almost there, almost there to real world, real use cases that I've felt in a long time. And we've been working at this from our team for four years on these problems. You know, we're all coming out of this crypto winter, and crypto winter taught us a lot of lessons. Um, but one thing that we are our biggest learning is that while we're all building a lot of great technology that could change the world, in many ways, community, our coming together, like we're doing here, is our, is our killer app. And one of the things that we see as we talk to people, and we talk to makers, and we see what's going on with projects around the world and go to all these events, is there's this feeling that the, the flowers are about to bloom. That if, we're, if it was winter a couple months, a couple years ago, or I'm sorry, a couple months ago, that we're very quickly turning the corner now, and that next year really could be the year where we see mainstream use cases and usage of all this cryptocurrency and decentralized technology. So today I'm introducing Pepo, which is an app that we developed based off all of this research. And if you're ready for that wow moment, that moment when you download an app and you say, wow, this is really awesome, I encourage you all to download the Pepo app right now. In fact, I'm going to give you a minute to all download the app while we watch how people are using the app. Hi, we're here at DevCon 5 with Alex, Oscar, and Jody. So this morning, I read on Twitter that men in unicorn shirts will cause the apocalypse. 
Well, you know, I tend to disagree. I think we can work together, and for that you should now join uh, Abby's workshop on human collaboration, and definitely tomorrow at 9.25, the talk by Griff Green on realigning incentives. Promo, promo, promo. Let's save the world, let's not cause the apocalypse. Yay! What's up, Ethereum Jesus? I'm looking for some shabu shabu dinner. Hey everyone, we're in Osaka. Let's take the taxi from Kicks Airport. See you guys soon. See you at 6 p.m. for the dinner. Hey everyone, my name is Keely Graydon. Uh, this is my first Pepo. Um, I definitely work in the blockchain and crypto space, but I'm currently working on a startup to help you better connect as you travel the world. Uh, and I'm actually here in Seattle attending the Founder Institute to really scale and make that happen. Um, uh, and when I'm not working on Witway, I basically just freelance marketing for a lot of blockchain crypto projects. Maybe you'll able to see the city. It's so beautiful here. Um, well, I'm excited to be part of this community. So, Pepo is a crypto app for the crypto community. What you see here is a collection of makers, creators, developers, people who are making great things in the crypto movement, sharing 30-second video updates about what they're working on. The app is live in the app stores. As of last week, it is the first crypto-powered app approved by Apple in the App Store. It has buy, uh, buying tokens, and it has cash out. It's fully regulatory compliant and FinCEN compliant. I'm going to walk you through how all this works. If you want to download the app right now, you can, and you use the login code SFBW to log into the app if it asks you for a login code, SFBW. So let's talk about how this works. Well, first is, as product designers, we wanted to create a, an experience that could be just as Web 2.0-like as your favorite Web 2.0 app. So we looked at if you were going to embed a crypto wallet and, and crypto microtransactions into an app like Ethereum, I'm sorry, excuse me, like Instagram, how would it work? So we designed the first app that feels like a dApp. Uh, the onboarding is simple. All users do to log into the app is connect their Twitter. Then all they need to do is enter a six-digit pin to, uh, to protect their wallet. That wallet is protected with, by a smart contract. So the six-digit pin uh, interacts with the smart contract if the user needs to recover their wallet. Uh, they can recover it from that smart contract. We also in innovated on something called session keys. Session keys make it so that the user does not need to manually sign every transaction. So there's no more opening up MetaMask or going out to another app or into another window in order to sign every microtransaction. Instead, the session keys allow transactions for two weeks up to $10, any microtransaction, uh, the second key, the session key that's enabled through a multi-sig, can sign transactions on behalf of the user. Biometrics are used if the user needs to authorize a new session, so they don't even need to enter the six-digit pin again if they need to interact with the app again. So it feels like a Web 2.0 app. Now, what's the crypto used for? Well, as you're watching a video inside of Pepo, you tap on the P button, this inverted heart, and every time you tap the button, it transmits one cent, peer-to-peer, -peer, decentralized, from the person who's tapping the button to the person who made the video. You can also go to someone's profile, and you can send them person-to-person, peer-to-peer, any amount you want. Um, and so what we've done here is we've named seamless microtransactions, seamless peer-to-peer -peer transactions, and we're using uh, the crypto, the tokens, for signaling, for curation, for bond curves, and soon we're gonna be adding messaging where people pay to message using the tokens inside the app. Every single transaction is super fast on Ethereum layer two. Uh, we run a full Ethereum EVM on a layer two side chains. And all the transactions are approved back to Ethereum layer one using the Mosaic protocol. And every, all of this is decentralized and every single transaction is on chain. Now, as I mentioned before, we are the first crypto app with crypto microtransactions approved by Apple. This is a big deal. The app was designed to be regulatory compliant and FinCEN compliant. Um, and it's been approved by Apple and Google for in-app purchase. So users can purchase tokens in the app, and then they're able to also convert the tokens, which actually are our market value token, to a stable coin that we call unicorns. And so users can take their Pepper coins, and they can convert them to unicorns, and then cash out those unicorns for various types of uh, options, such as gift cards, Amazon, Airbnb, Uber, and others. And we got there by talking to users and finding out what would users want as the off-ramps. And what we found is that anything up to 200 bucks, a gift card is just about as good as cash for most people. 
And yes, all of this is blockchain. Our team's been working on OST platform for four years, and we built the technology that enables all this to be possible. The user gets a private key that is put on their device. We give them the session keys that enable the meta transactions to take place without them having to manually sign every transaction. We give them very easy, under the hood ways to uh, add a second device. If the user really wants to access their mnemonic phrase, they can, but they don't have to. Um, and all of this is backed up by Ethereum smart contracts that we're running on our layer two solution. And best of all, all of the technology that goes into Pepo is open source. So if you go to dev.ost.com, you can grab the code to enable the wallet SDK that is inside of OST, I'm sorry, inside of Pepo, and you can build your own Pepo. You literally can build this functionality to enable microtransactions at scale in any application live today. Every single one of these transactions is live today. This is not something that's going to be launching, say, six months or a year from now. This is live today on Ethereum, on mainnet, for anyone to use. Grab the code, play with it, contact our team if you want to build something great. So how are we doing with the app? Well, we launched three weeks ago at DevCon 5. And people sort of like it, and it's humbling because we're getting awesome feedback. It's good to have people using the app. What we have is 1,200 beta users as of this morning. We had 25% of DevCon 5 uh, participants using the app. And amazingly, what they've done is 33,000 plus peer-to-peer -peer decentralized transactions. So if you think about that, 1,200 people have done 33,000 peer-to-peer decentralized transactions through a new app in the App Store on a blockchain in the last three weeks. That's awesome. Thank you, thank you. But none of this matters if we don't get to hundreds of thousands or millions of users. So the, really the key thing here is we need your feedback. So please, download the app, give it a try, make a video if you want. If not, just try playing around with the tokens and give us feedback because what we're doing here every single day is we're proving that tokens have utility, that there are good use cases possible, and that we actually create apps that are made better through the token use, that not a detrimental experience, but a better user experience because of the crypto involved. So I'll leave you with some more use cases of how people are actually using the app today. Thank you all very, very much. Hi, guys. DevCon 5. I'm here with Eric Berry. Eric? Hello. Look for the guy with the bunny ears if you want to chat. Advertising? That's what right. else are we doing? So uh, I'm with the Gitcoin team, and we also have Gitcoin ads, also known as Code Fund. Uh, we do blockchain advertising, so if you are a advertiser wanting to get in front of a blockchain audience like um, developers, or if you are wanting to make some money, find the dude with the bunny ears, that's me. That's him. All right. Well, since I'm liking the Pepo app so much, one of the things that I'm going to do is host a fireside chat every Friday based on the um, developments in terms of the implications of blockchains within IoT systems because that's what I uh, am really, really passionate about. So check this, 20 billion devices by 2020, a $1.3 trillion industry, and a bunch of enterprises waiting to jump into this problem space to not only increase their bottom lines, but to also fundamentally disrupt their own business models. Stay tuned for more details. Hey everybody, this is my first Pepo. I'm the crypto curator. I curate news information every day. The best way to get my brief is go to my website, thecryptocurator.com. There you can subscribe to the daily or the weekend brief. And I'm going to keep you up to speed on all the news, videos, podcasts, social media mentions, blogs, the whole nine yards. So the best way to keep up on crypto is at thecryptocurator.com. Meanwhile, I'm going to get back to enjoying a beautiful rooftop view here in Dallas. Thank you all very much.